Hello and welcome to this demo on footprinting with Kelly Linux. If we take a look at uh, Kelly's menu at the top here, um, you'll note that they've pretty much structured their menu items along the phases of a penetration test. And the first menu item is information gallery, which is footprinting or reconnaissance or whatever it is that you want to call it at this point in time and there are a few tools that they've listed here in their menu that they believe are the right tools to use and that might be the case however this is just the tip of the iceberg there are many other tools that are that are bundled with Kali Linux that aren't in this menu at all and the way to find them is to go to this URL http colon forward slash forward slash tools .org forward slash tools listing. If I go to that URL in Firefox, you will see that it takes you to a page that lists a whole bunch of tools that come with Kali Linux. And what is of particular interest in this specific lesson is if you look at the information gathering list, there are a whole number of tools listed there that aren't on the Kali menu. And it is two of those tools that I'm going to be using in this lab to illustrate footprinting. Let's take a look at them. The first tool I want to talk about is DNS Recon. Um, as mentioned in the um, overview of footprinting, uh, DNS is probably your best friend during the footprinting phase and DNS Recon is a really nice tool um, for DNS reconnaissance, hence the name. If you go to the applications menu under information gathering, you'll note that DNS Recon isn't listed here. So the way to launch it is to open a terminal and literally just type DNS Recon. And there it is. As you can see, there are a number of options available in DNS Recon. And during the footprinting phase, we're just going to use a few of them. So the ones I want to obviously talk about, the most important one is the minus D switch which is for the domain uh, which is obviously what you're going to be footprinting and then I also like to use the minus W switch which performs a deep whois record analysis so let's do that so the command would then be DNS recon minus D the domain that I've created for this demo is thundercloud.co.za and then minus W let's see what happens And there you have it. Let's take a look at the output. Alright, so the first thing we can see is that DNSSEC is not configured on this domain. And we can see that the name service point to domaincontrol.com with all the IP addresses. Very interesting to see is that there are also two MX records listed. So we can query the, um, the mail server because that would be the mail server's IP address. And there's also an A record for thundercloud.co.za, which might be a website. Further down the output from DNS Recon, we can see that there were no SRV records found. And it did a, a whois lookup against the records found. And it found that the IP ranges, the first three IP ranges, were all registered to godaddy.com, which is the registrar for this domain. And we can also see that the A record, uh, that 52 IP, is sitting in a block owned by Microsoft and that's because that web server is currently running on Microsoft's Azure cloud. Um, further down the list it asked me to do a reverse lookup or if I wanted to do a reverse lookup and I chose not to but what you could do in that phase is say A for all and then what DNS Recon will go and do is go and do a reverse lookup against all those IP addresses which does take an inordinate amount of time and sometimes isn't really that useful. Where it is useful is perhaps on an internal penetration test, but not on an external penetration test due to the large volume of data you're going to get that's totally irrelevant. Great. So that's DNS Recon in a nutshell. Let's move on to the next tool, which is DNS Enum. DNS Enum is also not uh, listed in the information gathering menu item here. So once again, we open a command prompt. And let's type DNS enum 
and we get all the options. Okay, so what I like to use DNS Enum for specifically is to look for subdomains, as you can see here, using the minus F key. And I have a file that I have created um, called subs.txt. Let me just show you quickly. So subs.txt has a whole list of general subdomains that you could find against a specific domain that people have registered. Okay, this is a very short list. You get massive lists out there but for the purposes of this demo I'm just going to be using this short list and then what I want to do is go back to DNS enum and then let's just look at the command option so what we need to do is put DNS enum the options and the domain so let's type that DNS enum minus f the name of the file subs.txt and the domain which is thundercloud Let's take a look at the output. Okay, so if, let's just scroll up slightly so we can see what's going on. Well, we can see that A record, 52.233.16197. We can see the name servers, domaincontrol.com, which is the GoDaddy IP range, as we saw earlier in the DNS recon tool. There are the two MX records and it tried a zone transfer but the zone transfer couldn't be completed because the zone transfer is protected by GoDaddy. But what's really interesting is that subs.txt file found a few subdomains that point to possible servers and services running. There's a dev.thundercloud which is sitting on IP173 and then if we look at FTP it's sitting on 197 and so is uh, thundercloud.co.za so those are very interesting IP addresses let's go see what we can find out about them all right until now we've actually been doing passive reconnaissance because we actually haven't queried any systems or services running on the target environment we've been pretty much querying DNS servers around the internet but now we're going to move to a more active reconnaissance and for that I'm going to use a tool called Nmap. Let's go take a look at that. So, if I type Nmap in at the command prompt, you will see that it comes back with hundreds of different options that you can set. Now, Nmap itself is a, is a very, very long-standing tool in the security community, as you can see this version is already 7.25 beta 1. Because Nmap is such a large tool with so many different options, I'm not going to go into too much detail here because there are actually entire courses just on Nmap and entire books written on how to use Nmap effectively. So what I'm going to do is just use Nmap very, very quickly to see if I can find a few open ports. Let's look at the um, commands for that. All right, so I've prepared a command here. So I type Nmap minus vv for extra verbosity because I like to see the output come out and I'm testing for the following open ports 21 FTP 22 SSH 80 HTTP 443 for HTTPS 1433 for MSSQL 3306 for MySQL and 3389 which is the RDP protocol port for Microsoft Terminal Services and I'm going to test it against that 97 IP let's see what happens okay so we can see that this um, IP address has one open port, which is port 80. So it's clearly a web server or a server running a web service. And what's interesting to note is the raw packet sent here. 17 packets were sent. So in other words, there were 17 active connections. And that's why this I, I like to term as active reconnaissance, because we're actually sending 17 packets to the target environment. Let's quickly run the same command against the other IP address, uh, the 173 IP address, and see what that comes back with. If you recall, this would be dev.thundercloud.co.za. Well, the dev environment seems a lot more open than the production environment. I see we have FTP open, we've got SSH open, which tells me this is a Linux server. It also has the AT IP, or the, sorry, the AT port open, so it tells me it's also running some web services. And very interesting, is that MySQL is open, although it says closed on the port, it's probably reset. But this 
um, server admin has opened MySQL on the internet, which is probably not a good idea. And that pretty much closes off the, the Nmap um, tutorial that I just wanted to show you very, very quickly. As I said before, it's a great tool. There are books and entire courses on it, and I highly recommend you go and look at those. Let's go see what else we can do about footprinting. Okay, so now I want to quickly go to back to passive reconnaissance, and here I'm going to use a tool called Netcraft. Uh, Netcraft is a website, and um, I'm going to query Google's Gruyere AppSpot.com project. Apologies if the pronunciation is incorrect. Okay, so what we do is we open a web browser, in this case Firefox, let's go to a new tab, and we go to www.netcraft. Dot com. Okie dokie. So Netcraft has now opened its page. If you scroll down the page, you will see here is what's the site running. This is a very awesome tool to actually find out what technologies the website's running, what's its IP address, and um, any other really interesting information about the website. So let's quickly just um, paste that URL in here. So let's just copy that and go back to Firefox and paste it in and let's hit enter and see what Netcraft brings back. Great, that was quite quick. As we can see there's a whole bunch of information about this website and you can pretty much run this query without any, any website on the internet. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So first of all we can see what the site title is, when it was first seen, the site ranking in Alexa, what's its language, but more importantly, this this is the kind of stuff that we're very interested for with regards to footprinting. We can see its IP address, its IPv6 address, who the domain registrar was, where it's situated, the organizations, a physical address, the hosting company that's hosting the website, and over here we can look at past histories of this website's IP address so we can see how it's changed through the years and how it's always been pretty much moved around within the Google hosting environment. As you can see it's always been run on Linux and the web server is the Google front end web server. So very interesting indeed. If you go further down you can see exactly what technologies it's running. Um, it's using the Google CDN and the Creative Commons widget for, um, for caching. It also has the technology using the Google App Spots. It's also running JavaScript, etc., etc. A really great tool to find out exactly what every single website is running. And I highly recommend you use this. Then finally, let's go look at the last tool that we want to do, and that's Whois. So Whois is pretty much a registrar database. So let's just Google Whois. And we just type Whois. And it comes back with a whole bunch of sites that actually assist you in doing Whois lookups. So let's take the first site in the list, um, networksolutions.com. And what I'm going to do, because this is all publicly available information, is I'm going to Google and see who actually registered Google. And that I just type google.com into this search window, hit search. And then it's going to ask me if I'm a robot. I click, I am not a robot, because I'm not. And now it's going to ask me to select images with a storefront. To make things a little bit faster, I did this before. And here's the results for Google.com's domain registration. As you can see, um, it has a whole lot of information about Google.com when it was first registered in 1997. Yes, that's how old it is and when it was last updated in 2015 it also has the domain status in other words can it be transferred or not the country that it's registered in the phone number for google the dns admin for google um, and all of this information is public and freely available we can also look what name servers it's been using etc etc so whois is a great tool to actually start your footprinting with because you can actually get the big picture of the entire domain and where it all started and what services are possibly running. And that pretty much concludes this um, lab or tutorial on footprinting. I hope that you found some of the tools very useful. And remember that we've just really scratched the surface here. There's so many tools in footprinting. If you recall, in Kelly Linux, 
There's a whole bunch of information gathering tools and there's a whole bunch of passive reconnaissance tools on the internet as well. And to become a really good penetration tester, you need to have the skills across all these tools and use the right tools for the right reasons. But I hope that this uh, tutorial gave you at least an introductory start on where to start looking for all the tools to get your footprinting phase underway. Thank you.